The Jack Benny Program. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. L-S-M-F-T. 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 Of course. Right you are. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. For real deep down smoking enjoyment, you want a cigarette made of fine tobacco. For certainly it takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, first, last, and always, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. At 45, sold American. So for real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Well, ladies and gentlemen, last Thursday was Thanksgiving. So let's turn back the clock and show you how Jack Benny and his gang spent the day. Our scene opens in Jack's home in Beverly Hills. And at the moment, Rochester is straightening up the house. Night and day, I am the one. Thanksgiving comes and goes, but I'm never done. Rochester. I'm working all the time. I'm nothing but a one-man assembly line. <laughs> Night and day. Rochester. Day and night. <laughs> Paul Robeson. Yes, Mr. Benny. <laughs> You're always singing, always singing. Well, I'm happy, boss. Here it is Thanksgiving, and I'm glad I wasn't born a turkey. <laughs> oh, you, uh, you wouldn't like that, huh? No, I couldn't stand being in an oven all undressed and people peeping in at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And when you ain't got no head, you can't blush. <laughs> Rochester, stop being so silly. You know, I'm going, I'm going to Miss Livingston's house for a Thanksgiving party, so help me get dressed. Okay, boss, but if I were you, I'd change my mind about wearing that old tuxedo. Why? What'd you do to it? Oh, it's nothing I did, boss, but when I went to get it, the closet was full of moths. Moths? Oh, my goodness. Were they eating my tuxedo? Eating it? They didn't even look up when I came in. <laughs> well, maybe it won't show. What part did they eat? Well, to put it geographically, the South ain't solid anymore. <laughs> no, it can't be that bad. Now, go get my dress shoes. I ain't going back in that closet again. They warned me. <laughs> warned you? Those moths are tough. What? When I reached for your tuxedo, they grabbed the fountain pen out of the pocket, unscrewed the cap, put it up to their shoulder like a bazooka, and squirted ink in my face. <laughs> squirted ink in your face? You'll have to take my word for it, boy. <laughs> Rochester, why is it that every time I get dressed, I have to go through all of... Come in! Remember me? I'm Herman Peabody, the insurance salesman. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, Herman. I just dropped by to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Well, thanks. Thanks, Herman. Come on in. I'd like to, but this leash won't reach any farther. <laughs> oh, you've got your dog with you? No, oh, my turkey. I'm taking it out for a walk. Herman, you're taking your turkey out for a walk on Thanksgiving? It was his last request. <laughs> Oh. On the way over here, I put the turkey on a penny weighing machine, and a little card came out. What did it say? It said, you weigh 32 pounds, have good character, make friends easily, but you have a tendency to lose your head. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute, Herman. Have you been celebrating Thanksgiving? Uh-huh. I thought so. 
Well, goodbye, Herman. Have a nice dinner. Well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. Come on, Dolores. <laughs> a peculiar sort of a fella. Here, Rochester, before I put my coat on, you better fix my bow tie. Yes, sir. Lift your chin up a little. Someday I'm going to learn how to tie a bow myself, and I won't... Rochester, don't just stand there holding it. Tie it. I'm waiting for your Adam's apple to clear the runway. <laughs> <laughs> Rochester, this is no time for jokes, so hurry up with my bow tie. Yes, sir. Wait a minute, tie it below my Adam's apple. But, boss, last time you went to a party, I tied it above your Adam's apple. I know. Every time I swallowed, I pulled my shirt tail out. <laughs> so this time, tie it. There's the phone. I'll get it. Mr. Benny's residence, star, stage, screen, radio, and we'll sit with children, 50 cents extra. <laughs> Rochester, just answer the phone and don't... Hello, Rochester. This is Miss Livingston. Is Mr. Benny there? Yes, Miss Livingston. Just a minute. It's for you, boss. Hello? Jack, what's taking you so long? Everybody's here but you. Well, Mary, I've got a little surprise for you. I'm going to dress formal tonight. Formal? Yes. What are you going to do? Wear your black toupee? <laughs> no, I'm wearing my tuxedo. Oh, Jack, that faded old thing. It's so green and splotchy. It is not. It is, too. The last time you wore it, you looked like a Jap sniper. <laughs> I'm gonna wear it anyway, and I'll be over in a few minutes. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Jack. Yeah? I hate to ask you this, but, well, uh, I've worked hard making this dinner for the whole gang, so I thought maybe you'd stop over at the florist and bring me some flowers. Okay, Mary, I'll bring you half a dozen roses. Only a half a dozen? But, Jack, they don't cost much. Well, no, the roses alone don't, Mary, but... You're going to the expense of the entire dinner. Why should you spend any more? <laughs> After all, you're doing enough. Jack, I meant for you to buy the roses. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Well, Mary, you didn't have to beat around the bush. Why didn't you come right out and say so? Of course I'll bring them. Goodbye. Goodbye. Of all the cheap guys I ever... What did you say, Mary? This isn't Mary. This is the operator. Well, you're not supposed to be listening in. <laughs> Smart Alec operator. Oh, say, Rochester, I think it'd be a good idea if you came along with me. Miss Livingston might need some more help. I'd like to, but you know every Thanksgiving I go to a party on Central Avenue. Oh, yes, that's right. We fill up on plum pudding and brandy sauce. Mmm. -hmm. Say, that sounds good, huh? Plum pudding and brandy sauce. Yes, sir. And this year it's going to be better than ever. Why? We couldn't get any plum pudding. <laughs> oh, well, you go right ahead, Rochester, and have a good time. I better be running along, too. How do I look? Am I okay? You look neat, boss. But uh, do you have to wear all those elf teeth at the same time? Certainly, Rochester. I belong to eight different lodges. Anyway, what's wrong with it? Nothing, but you've got the only best in town that smiles at you. <laughs> well, you know me. I always like to put up a happy front. <laughs> so long, Rochester. So long, kid. <laughs> Take 
It sure was. Gee, I wish Jack would get here. Come on, Phil, play us another one. Yeah, get hot. Swing it. Say, Phil, that's a swell idea, bringing your whole band over here to Mary's house. Yeah, wasn't it, Mary? Phil, I don't mind your band being here, but your boys have got a lot of nerve putting one of my best dishes on the piano for an ashtray. That ain't no ashtray. That's for tips. <laughs> tips? What a gang. Say, Mary, when are we going to eat? I'm hungry. Me too, Miss Livingston. Now, take it easy, fellas. We'll eat as soon as Jack gets here. Meanwhile, let's have some fun. Okay, let's have some more music. Hit it, George. Hey, Just wait a fun. minute, Phil. Can I play the drums? Sure, go ahead. Beat it out, Don. Come on, George. Hit it out there. Play it, Don. Oh. Yeah, Don. Hey, hey, Don. Look out. Look out, Don. symbol off your head. You look like dragon seed. <laughs> and fellas, don't break up the house. I've got to go out in the kitchen and see how my new maid is doing. Okay, Mary, hurry back, huh? I will. Okay, George, hit it. Bye -bye, baby. That's the only thing I'm thinking of. Oh, oh, Pauline, as soon as Mr. Benny gets here, we'll have dinner. Yes, ma'am. I'll put the turkey on the serving tray and you go in the dining room and set the table. Oh, I've already done that, Miss Livingston, and I hope you like it. I put the butter right in the center and around it I put the salt shakers. You put the salt shakers around the butter? And around the salt shakers, I put the pepper shakers. And around the pepper shakers, I put the cream pitchers. And around the cream pitchers, I put the sugar bowls. <laughs> well, Pauline, why did you do all that? Well, we can't stop them from using the butter, but I figured we can slow them down a little. <laughs> I love you, Pauline, but I'll rearrange the table letter later. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> right now, you better help me. I've been having trouble with the cranberry sauce. What's the matter? Can't you get the berries to cram? <laughs> <laughs> Pauline, you don't cram berries. You mash them. Gee, I'm sorry, Miss Livingston. I don't know much about cooking, but if I did, it would probably help me to get a boyfriend who's interested in marriage. Like my girlfriend who wanted to get married, so she went to school to learn how to cook. Then after she learned how to cook, she met the cutest fella, and they were married. And after they were married, she found out he was a chef, so it really doesn't make any difference, does it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess it doesn't. Anyway, let's... Oh, say, Mary, I just thought about something. Just a minute, Phil. I'm talking to my maid. Well. <laughs> Get a load of them legs. Phil. I'm looking at the turkey. <laughs> Oh. Anyway, Libby, when the food's all ready, let me know and I'll help you serve it. Thanks, but it won't be necessary, Phil. I've hired a butler for the day. Okay. Mm, I'd sure love to see that turkey in a bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, get out of here. Say, he's cute, isn't he? Yeah. Now, Pauline, you mash the potatoes while I get the ice cubes out of it. Oh, there's the door. Oh, that's all right, Pauline. I'll get it. I can't give you anything but love, baby. That's the only thing. Oh, hello, Jack. Come on in. Hello, Mary. So nice, I thought I'd walk over. Isn't it a bright, sunny day? <laughs> yeah. Here, I'll take your parasol. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, and uh, help me off with my overcoat, will you? Okay. <laughs> now, hand me your hat. Here. And here's my muffler. And my gloves. Now hold my coat while I take off my sweater, will you? Okay. <clears throat> there you are. Do you want to refill on your hot water bottle? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can kid if you want to, but this is the season for colds. <laughs> you know, Mary, Mary, a funny thing just happened. As many times I've been over here, today I walked right by your house and had to come back. I don't doubt it. Once you get all those clothes moving, it's hard to stop them. <laughs> yeah. Is everybody here? Sure, they're in the living room. Let's go in. Okay. Say, Jack, how about the flowers? They said they'd send them over. They'll probably be here pretty soon. Hiya, fellas. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Jack. Can it be the the Bill? I get it, I get it. Well, fellas, you having fun? Oh, I'll tell you 
Say we are. Say, Good. Jackson, who do you think I ran into last night? Who, Phil? Your old girlfriend, Gladys Zabisco. Really? How is Gladys? Oh, fine. And you know, Jackson, she looks a lot better. She had an operation on her nose. Her nose? Why, her nose was straight. What did she have done? She had it moved to the middle of her face. <laughs> Yeah, I'm hungry, Mary. Uh, uh, pretty soon. Say, Larry, while we're waiting, how about singing us a song? Yeah, come on, Larry. How about it, huh? Sure, kid. Go ahead, will okay. you? Okay. Oh, there's the door. I'll get it, Mary. Hold the song till I come back, will you, kid? Yum, bum, 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 dee, dum, 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 dee, dum. Dum, 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 sweet Georgia Brown. Dum, 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 dee, dum, dee, dum, dum. <laughs> yes? How do you do? Is this Miss Livingston's residence? Yes, yes, it is. Well, Miss Livingston is expecting me for Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, oh, well, come right in. You got here just in time. The fun's just starting. How nice. Now, let me take your hat. Thank you. Your coat. Thank you. Now, follow me. Hey, kids! Oh, pardon me, pardon me. I didn't introduce myself. I'm Jack Benny. How do you do? I'm the new butler. Hey, kids! <laughs> what? <laughs> The butler? Yes. Are you the downstairs man? <laughs> I happen to be a guest here. If you're the butler, the kitchen's right through that door. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Jack, who was that at the door? Nobody. Well, whose ho uh, coat and hat are you carrying? Whose coat and cap? <laughs> oh, darn it, you're a butler and he just came in. <laughs> Help. Go ahead and sing, Larry. Go ahead. I'll walk alone because to tell you the truth, I'll be alone. Conga line. Okay. Da 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 da. da. Boom. Da 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 da. da. Boom. Da 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 da. Boom. <laughs> Don, if you can't control it, don't swing it. <laughs> For heaven's sake. Oh, Jack, you and your ideas. Now come on in, fellas. The dinner will get cold. Okay, let's go. Okay, I'll be with you in a minute. Hey, look what's in that this dish here on top of the piano. 
Well. Hey, get your hands out of there, Jackson. That's for the boys. <laughs> oh. How in the world could she see from the other room? <laughs> Mary, I'll bring this straight back chair in here. Okay. Hey, where, uh, where do you want me to sit, Mary? Uh, right there. Your name's on the place card. Well, place cards and everything. How did Phil know where to sit down? He can't read. <laughs> I put his picture on the place. <laughs> Oh, that's all your fault, Jackson. You got people thinking I can't read. Oh, yeah? Well, let me see you write your name. Don't change the subject. I'm talking about reading. <laughs> I thought so. Jack, will you please sit down and carve the turkey? Okay, okay. Boy, get the size of it. You know, Jack, that's a bigger one than we had at your house last Thanksgiving. Oh, I don't know. My turkey was pretty big. Go on, I've seen more meat on Sinatra. <laughs> I don't know about that. Hey, Larry, what do you want, white meat or dark meat? White meat, please. Don? I'll have some dark meat. Say, Mary, did you stuff this turkey yourself? Yes, why? Well, it's so round, so firm, so fully packed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harris, you're so spontaneous, and you haven't had a drink all day. <laughs> well, that doesn't apply to turkeys. That's Lucky Strike cigarette. I know, I know. Hey, kids, pass the sauce. The sauce? Yes, with men who know Tabasco best, I'll take it two to one. <laughs> oh, Harris, just like a pilgrim, you're making progress, you boy. <laughs> you love oh, it. Oh, brother. Now, Phil, cut that out. The correct saying is, with men who know Tabasco best, it's Lucky's two to one. Don, Phil's only kidding. Can't you see we've got Lucky Strike cigarettes on the table? Well, then let's hurry up with the dinner and get at them. All right, all right. Oh, Miss Livingston, shall I serve the hot biscuits now? Yes, Carl. Uh, very well, madam. There. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, don't throw the biscuits. Yeah. Why don't you stand closer to the table? I've been watching these people eat, and I don't want to get any on me. <laughs> <laughs> what? And that old man with the carving knife scares me to death. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I know your type. Those blue eyes aren't fooling me a bit. <laughs> You're just mad because my tuxedo is better than yours. Now, Carl, your job is just to serve the food, not to antagonize the guests. Yes, madam. Hey, Jackson, how about making a speech? Yeah. Come on, yeah. huh? Yeah. Come on, make a speech for us. Go oh. ahead, Jack. Say something. This is the first time we've all had dinner together in a long time. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, kids... It's sure nice for all of us to be gathered here on Thanksgiving. I know that during the year we've had our little differences and a few arguments, but this is a day to forget all that and cement our friendship so that it's stronger than ever. Here, here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and now... <laughs> If we'll just forget our little differences. But, Jack, we've never had any real arguments. Of course not, Jackson. Oh, I was just thinking about little things like last week when Don and I had that argument about what naval hero said, don't give up the ship. Now, Don found out he was wrong, and I'm not going to rub it in. It's all over. So if we'll just... Wait get a it... minute, Jack. I wasn't wrong. So if we'll just it get together... It was get... Captain James Lawrence who said, don't give up the ship. No, 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 Don. It was John Paul Jones. So if we'll Jack, just... I still insist you're wrong. It was Captain James Lawrence. Don Wilson, you can argue till you're blue in the face. It was John Paul Jones. And I'm going to prove it. Jack, put down that carving knife. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Beast. <laughs> Thanksgiving, so let's forget it. You think it was Captain James Lawrence, but I know it was John Paul Jones. Say, Jackson, wasn't he on our program about five weeks ago? That was John Charles Thomas. Oh, okay. 
Now, John, take my word for it. I know what I'm talking about. Well, so do I. It was Captain James Lawrence. It was John Paul Jones. Oh, for heaven's sake, cut it out. Carl, serve the dessert, will you please? I will if those two gentlemen don't get off the table. <laughs> I will if he will. I'll have some more of that white meat. That's my leg. <laughs> Now, Don Wilson, I think it's awful for you to come here on Thanksgiving, accept Mary's hospitality, and start a big argument like this. I didn't start the argument. You did. And any schoolboy knows that Captain James Lawrence said, don't give up the ship. Well, every schoolboy knows that it was John Paul Jones. And you're just being stubborn about it, that's all. Jack, for goodness sake, finish the speech you started. I'll do it if everybody will shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Now, as I was saying... <laughs> we're gathered here on Thanksgiving Day in a spirit of friendship. A word that in itself represents that binding tie between all people. Let's try, friend. Let's try to keep the feeling that is so prevalent on this day throughout the entire year. So whenever you feel discouraged, just think of those famous words of John Paul Jones. Don't give up the... Jack, we'll be back in just a minute. But first, here are my good friends, L.A. Speed Riggs and Kenneth Delmar. If you were present at the auctions down south, you could see Lucky Strike consistently select and buy the finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. Remember that the next time you buy cigarettes. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's program are Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. And Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 44, 44, sold American. And this is Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. A friendly suggestion. For your own greater enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Say, Mary... Mary, I enjoyed your Thanksgiving dinner very much, but I wish Don wouldn't be so stubborn. After all, when a man's wrong, why doesn't he give in? But Jack, Don is right. It wasn't John Paul Jones. Oh. It was Captain James Lawrence who said, don't give up the ship. Mary, Captain James Lawrence said, I do not choose to run. <laughs> he did not. Then who said it? <laughs> One of Crosby's horses. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, well, I'm not going to argue. I got to go over to Joe E. Brown's program and congratulate him on his 44th anniversary. I don't have to. I want to go. I mean, there's the door. I, I can't, can't give you anything but love, baby. Flowers for Miss Livingston. Flowers? Oh, yes, Mary. Don't you remember? I stopped off at the florist. Oh, yes. Well, boy, what took you so long? Why didn't you bring the flowers sooner? I couldn't. Mr. Benny only ordered the seeds. <laughs> well, I wanted them to be nice and fresh. Good night, folks. <laughs> Broadcasting Company. KFI, Los Angeles, Earl C. Anthony, Incorporated. Flamingo Nail Polish, the exquisitely beautiful nail polish that well-groomed women use. Flamingo is long-lasting, resists chipping and peeling, and comes in thrilling shades. Buy Flamingo, 25 cents plus tax. <laughs> 